This is the first centre of Bethlehem city. It's the Nerevili Square. Bethlehem is now six kilometres squared and because most of the land's been confiscated because of the wall. So it would take you nearly half an hour to walk from the beginning of Bethlehem to the end of Bethlehem. Not many people know that Bethlehem lays in uh, Palestine. Sometimes tourists claim that it lays in Israel, or they don't know. It's just what gives Bethlehem the importance for most of the international community is uh, this church, the Nagwiri church. But it's uh, for me deeper than the Nagwiri church. It's uh, people, history, everything, Palestine. Especially for me, like Bethlehem is the most interesting city in the West Bank or in most of Palestine. I do love living here. Now the settlements uh, are Israeli points inside the West Bank. Now even if the peace process took over and we had our country, we can't survive with the settlements because it's in the middle of the West Bank but it's considered as Israeli, it's controlled by Israelis, it's, it's protected by Israelis and we can't read them. The settlements are taking the lands of Bethlehem, but it's considered Israeli. I can't get in. It's, uh, it will be considered in the future as apart from Israel. So I can't pass by, by, by the settlements as any other Palestinian who's living in the West Bank or in Gaza. So it's in general like places as in my idea, it's hot places you can't preach, or uh, places just in memory. Here you can see the real streets. It's, not, it's less than two meters. At the same time, you don't have the refugee camps. We don't have names for the streets. Israelis, they used to name their, uh, the streets by their own. For example, if you look here, you can see some Hebrew handwriting from the first intifada that was written by the Israelis. It says the Fork Street. Uh, like, they do this just to, to know where they are or to communicate together. In the same time, if you look here, this is the only free space inside the refugee camp where our kids used to play. Like, if you come after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll find a lot of kids playing here because we don't have space. So the only sp space inside the refugee camp is this one. If you look even to the houses here inside the refugee camp, you can see people they build in the top of the houses because we don't have enough space inside the refugee camp. Like, uh, you know, in the Arab community in general, you can find the father and the mother, they live in the middle. Where the, when their sons, they get married, they used to live around them. Uh, here in the Haisha, we don't have the system. The only way to build it is on the top of the house is one day I think we will reach the sky. Like we can find the father and the mother, they live in the first house. Their sons, when they get married, they used to build in the top and they live in the top. <coughs> and also, houses here, it's very close to each other. That's mean. We don't have a privacy even inside the refugee camp. It's also one of the problems that we have here. Uh, sometimes if you had a fight inside the house with your wife, you know, all the neighborhood will know about it. Now we are going to one of the oldest areas inside the refugee camp where we can see the original rooms, the original buildings inside the refugee camp. Also, we'll see one of the bathrooms that people, they used to use. In this place here, we have six rooms here. We have six rooms for six families. They used to live in this place. Like, 
You can see the original rooms that we have inside the refugee camp. These rooms, uh, as I mentioned before, these rooms used to be the only thing for the families in that time. And uh, like we will, the average for the families, as I say, used to be between six to ten. And you can imagine how the people they used to live in the, this kind of rooms, like even with their stuff. Like um, I'm, I'm not talking only about human beings who live in here. Only their sheets, all their stuff used to be in this kind of rooms. And here you can see also one of the public bathrooms that the people they used to use. Like used to be like the letter, but by by the time it's destroyed. Uh, 125 they used to use this bathroom. Uh, you know, every day in the morning they used to stand in lines just to do their needs. At the same time, people who used to live in this place, they used to be very glad because or very happy, they are very close to the bathroom. So they don't have to wait every day in the morning. The houses from inside, like this room, it was the people they used to live here. All this family, they used to live in this here, in this room. And you can imagine like, if they put all the sheets in this side, that's mean, from here to here. 11 people, they used to sleep here. Also, you can see, this is like, they open it new, it used to be blocked. One family in this room, one family in the second room, one family there, one family there. So this is the way how they used to live, like, they spent since 57, till the beginning of the 70s, they used to live in this kind of rooms. Do you know, some people, they still live in this kind of rooms till now, because they don't have money, they don't have, you know, they didn't work at all. And if you look outside, you can see the new rooms that the United Nations, they built this one. Now, the United Nations, they built it only for the poor families, which it is. Uh, only 10 families here inside the refugee camp, they are poor, like they built these rooms, there's big difference, it's the same size even, 3 meter by 3 meter, but it's big different because with these rooms they have also a bathroom, not like this one. They used to be farmers. Here inside the Haitian refugee camp, maybe we don't have space even to farm, but people they start to even to use anything to farm. You can see a lot of trees here inside the refugee camp also, a lot of people, when we say 11,000 people, only human being. But if you go to the reality and you, you see here, there is a lot of animals even live with us inside the refugee camp. And I think even the animals here inside the refugee camp, they don't want to live in this kind of condition. <laughs> We can say it's a kind of alternative work here inside the refugee camp. Like, as I say, people they used to be workers inside Israel, and now they start to find an alternative work to work. So through the goats here, they can make cheese, milk, everything. Sally, I didn't introduce her. <laughs> Sally, her father, he was inside the Israeli jails for six years. And he died. You know, in the last year he spent inside the Israeli jail. He get cancer. And he died inside the Israeli jails. Maybe you saw her. She was pointing there. There is a bridge uh, there. It's called Amjad Faraj Bridge. They call it this, uh, this name because of her father. She says, like this is my father bridge, I told her, yeah. <laughs> you can see the satellites, that's me. Most of the people can say we know about everything in this world. We are try to educate ourselves about all the conflicts in this world, but I think no one know about us as Palestinian refugees. From the street to the side, it's the Haitia, there, there is a blue tank, it's the end of the camp. At the same time, you can see all the settlements which it is around. Also, there is a special road only for Israelis, Palestinians, they are not allowed to use it.
Like if you look there, you can see a part of the wall. Also one of the settlements, it's called Gilo Settlement. Here we have the mountains there, the, the mountains like three uh, military camps for the Israeli army. This side there's a special road, it's called 60 Road. It's only for Israelis, Palestinians, they are not allowed to use it. This side here we have uh, another settlement, it's called the Frata, the Frata Settlement. Here military camps in all these mountains. This side here we have another settlement, it's called Kua Settlement. From this side, Har Huma, that means we are already have a wall, wall of settlements before the real wall. For me, I like the wall. Because in, uh, in general, since we born inside this refugee camp, we used to live near a fence, but no one knew about it. Now, no one can ignore the wall anymore. It's a wall, it's in front of you. You can't ignore it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. And at the same time, you can't ignore us as, as Palestinians. You can't say that we are a terrorist anymore. Because, I mean, the wall itself, I don't like it. In the same time, I like it because of this issue, which it is, it's the reality. You can't ignore it, and that's it. In 1948, my parents, uh, they uh, left uh, the country near uh, Lid and Ramla. Zakaria is named my village. And they, uh, Jewish, the, they took the land. And uh, my mother, she had three boys before me in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, boys. Uh, and after, uh, they left the, the village. They came to a uh, village named Su'ir, near uh, Hebron. Mm -hmm. And after, they left and come to Dhisha camp. When they come, uh, my uh, mother was pregnant. And after, uh, after six months, uh, they have tent in Dehesha camp from UN, Anrua. They give him tent, and uh, I born there in the middle of the camp, in the tent, in 51. Yes. And uh, after uh, they have, uh, in summer, they are quiet and they stay in the tent. After the, after summer, uh, autumn and uh, winter. In winter, the tent damaged. They took us to Bijala, Bijala near us here, city, and uh, we lived in uh, old building with my parents. I uh, six, about six months I was. And they left the Dehesha camp because it's raining too much and they can't stay in the tent. Uh, we stay till uh, spring and again they come to, to Dehesha camp uh, and they again build the tent. And uh, we stay uh, about three or uh, five, five years when they start to build the Anrua for us. My mother, she uh, was bring the water from uh, Burak, about two kilo, three kilo to uh, to do for us, to clean for us, and it is uh, uh, far. The water was very far. She put on the head, head the tank, and she come about three times. She go three, uh, 
three kilo and come to bring water for us. And uh, the U uh, UN give uh, something for UN for uh, refugee. They give uh, rice, oil, uh, uh, flour. But it is not enough. But what they give, they eat. Because no money, no job. They start uh, in the tent. Uh, between they are uh, uh, feeling that they will return to the village or the Jewish uh, refuse them. Or like this, so they have news about uh, the uh, problem, but uh, they have not stable not stable, always they are thinking, uh, and my father, he was a farmer in the village. He can't work anything here because he haven't a certificate. Uh, after uh, they uh, start uh, the school in the tent, they sent us to the tent, I am and my brothers, to study. Uh, after they uh, start to build the school, not this school, old school, and after I am studying in the in the Dhesh school. Uh, after they build the school, after the tent, they build the school, and they put us together, boy and girl. They give us one room, the UN. And it is one room and kitchen. We can't, we are slept together. We have six... Uh, Six boys, three girls we are. Nine, and my mother, my father, uh, eleven. We put uh, like this on the floor. We slept on the floor, folded us near us. Uh, we haven't bed, we haven't money to, to, uh, to buy bed or to buy uh, cover. My mother put us together because she wants uh, to, to be warm together and uh, we have only one room. Who is five, five uh, or six, the Anrua give him one room. Who is five? Yeah, uh, she, the Anrua, they decide how to give the rooms. You, you know where the rooms like this one. We have still Anrua room here. My mother speak about the problems, yani how the Jewish was very bad. The, uh, time to time they doing a problem because they want to, to, to be us afraid from them and to stop everything, not ask about our village, not ask about anything. And uh, America, Britannia, France, they help them. They are, uh, uh, they are uh, happy, the Jewish, because the, who is a, a big country help them? America, Britannia, France, and uh, they want to do what before meeting uh, decide. They haven't television. We haven't. In 75, we have electricity and television to see the world, what happens. We was only mm, like this uh, radio. Mm -hmm. That radio, it is in uh, 67, when the Jewish enter all the West Bank. We hear that in Abdel Nasser will, uh, will, will do war with the Jewish and we will return back to our uh, village and to, uh, to our country. They are happy, the people, mm, you know, if, uh, from tent to return back to uh, their country, it is uh, nice, they are happy. After in one day, all the Jewish enter all the West Bank and Gaza and yeah. Syria. Uh, Again, they, the people be sad more and more. It is uh, uh, fell down the people. They can't. Uh, I, I was in... Uh, about uh, 15 years there, uh, that, uh, that time. I remember everything. I, uh, I saw my mother, or my mother-in-law, or my uh, grandmother. They sit on the street, they speak. 
about the war, maybe they uh, will return us uh, to our uh, uh, land. But some people, they told America will help Jewish. We, we, uh, we are not uh, accept the war. When they uh, hear that what happens, all the people afraid. They told me, come and dress your grandmother dress. Because the Jewish was in 48, they took a girl and doing and doing about the girl. Now maybe they do like before. Oh, I told my mother, what's oh. happened? I, I can't dress this. She told me, you will dress. 15 years, they, maybe the Jewish doing like uh, Der Yassin, Qarya, village in uh, near Jerusalem. The first time I came here, I was really surprised by what they are protecting themselves from. I actually, if you are afraid, you will protect yourself. If you are not afraid, you don't need that. And if you are guilty, you'll feel all the people are watching you. This is what they were feeling. Don't understand how they deal with us. But this is what they learned, how to hate us how to grey out hatred. Like for me, I would protect myself in such a thing from a monster or an alien, such as Hollywood movies, <laughs> but not from people. <laughs> no, if I go to Israel, I wouldn't feel they would kill me. Soldiers, yeah, maybe, but I know that the Israelis are human beings the same like me, have the same blood, and have similar ideas. In the beginning, we are human beings. This is what, what's more important for me. They're just looking for life, but I've been grown with the same hatred that being grown, they've been grown on. But it's just you, yourself, if you can make the revolution on what you've been grown on and make peace. The money that they spend to make war is so much. You need like 10% of that to make peace. We are just normal, we are human beings. That's what they can't understand. Or that was their government. Do not them want to understand. They want them all away controlled by the government, controlled by fear from us, from the entire world actually. It's not only from us, because making Israel the state of Jews makes them feel that they are hated from all over the countries, but actually we learn how to hate Jews from the Europeans. It's not something we created. Jews lived here for long times and we used to have friends even after the occupation, like my father used to have a friend called Ellie. And we used to hook up together, we used to go to the Dead Sea together. But after the Intifada, he was, after the first Intifada actually, he was prevented from coming, coming here because uh, they are Palestinians, they hate you. And they are created to hate you. This, uh, this place used to be a military base, military Israeli base, and it had been closed before nearly one year. It used to be called al shirab which is the crow's nest. This uh, base used to be, in the beginning, a Jordanian base, a uh, military base, under the Jordanian control of the West Bank before 19, between 1948 and 1967. After that, the Israelis found that this is a very good point to watch all of what we see around here and there. Bethlehem, you can see a lot from here. It's not only this place was that was the military base. All the, the land around it was not allowed to be reached. There's a piece of land there refers to an organization called the Arab Women Union 
and uh, that land uh, have never been touched from nearly 50 years ago. Uh, it been lost. Most of the lands here never been touched, never been, never had possibility to improve or to be planted or doing any kind of improvement with the land because of the military base. Uh, most of the lands around were nearly confiscated because of this space. And that land there, there was also a tower there towards the, this road. Uh, like this space used to extend till that area. It's not only where we are walking. Like the base here is just the place where they can, the uh, where the soldiers used to have some sleep or some rest from watching us. And this base is uh, to protect for settlers, and then they got that road. So that tower, that uh, military tower, is doing the, sa the same job that this base, all of this base, was trying to do, which is protecting that road that leads between the settlements. Actually, the wall here passes just down of this hill, just down of here. You can see it from here, but it passes from down of this hill. This is, a this is considered by Oslo as Area C where Palestinians can't have, like, Area C is so confusing, like, uh, you are under control, but anything you want to build, anything you want to make, you have to ask for uh, an Israeli permission for that, so, like, it's easy to get the Palestinian permission, but it's impossible to get the Israeli permission. And actually, they keep these areas empty because, like, they're trying to keep this area, these areas empty. Because, especially in Beit Sahor, like from Bethlehem, especially in Beit Sahor and like the east part and some of the west part, they don't build a wall. They built a fence, a kind of electrical fence. Uh, now they surrounded Beth, uh, Beit Sahor with an electrical fence. So in the future, if they want to have uh, more lands or confiscate more lands it's easy to move a fence better than moving a wall uh, so in the future we do, I don't know if in 10 years period I can be standing here again or not or I'm allowed to be here or not We started in 94 as a dance troupe, and the idea in that time it used to be like a, a cultural exchange between some kids from Palestine and some kids from France. We started with 24 kids, we make a performance here, and then we go to France, we perform there, and we have this cultural exchange project. And you know, in the end, uh, we came back here to Palestine, and at that time, uh, the founders for this cultural center, they decide to finish everything because they, they don't have uh, money or they don't have fun to continue. But the families for these 24 kids, they force them uh, to continue with the idea and, uh, you know, to uh, to, have, to create the dance room itself. Because in the beginning, as I say, it used to be a cultural exchange project. After that, we became a dance room. We used to travel all over the world. We went to more than 28 countries. Some countries we visited for 20 times, like Sweden, for example. And between 94 till 2000, we used to make our trainings as a dance troupe inside the refugee camp streets. Because we don't have any building, we don't have any fund, we don't have anything. And between 94 till 2000, all the shows that we make, we collect fund through it. And till 2000, we get a lot of salary. And in that time, you know, the United Nations, they give us this piece of land where it used to be a place where they share the food with the families here inside the refugee camp. And in that time, you know, we destroyed the small building here and we built our culture center. 
everything in, the, in this culture center it used to be dreams for kids in 94 and everything it's become in the reality except one dream which it is we never ever perform in Jerusalem. same time we have an educational program it's called use music which it is talk uh, you know we try to educate children about the music or teach them how to use the music as the kind of resisting against the occupation and you know also we have different committees in it there, like the health committee the art committee uh, the women committee the oral history project uh, the media center or the media committee the sport club you know we try to use anything uh, as a kind of resisting against the occupation. We start to work also with the youth and we create the sport club. In the sport club we have more than seven, uh, sorry, 37, uh, 370 players. They work in this sport club, different teams, basketball, swimming team, volleyball, everything. Something we are really proud about it, which it is, we have the first basketball team for women inside the refugee camp. Uh, the basketball team for men, they get the championship of West Bank. Uh, since we started now, we never ever get the championship of Palestine, because you know the championship of West Bank and the championship of Gaza, they have to play together. We can't go to Gaza, they can't come here. We can't go to Egypt, they can't come to Jordan. And since three, three, three years, we didn't get the championship of uh, Palestine. What we have now, like we have three buildings. We have uh, the new building, which it is in the middle of the camp, where we have a library, a kindergarten, nursery, a sewing factory for women, uh, the diabetes center for the health committee, the women committee offices, the health committee offices and clinic, uh, and the media center. Also, we have a small, a small hall downstairs where we make all our meetings. Uh, we have the guest house. In the third floor, we have our hall where we do all our activities uh, for theater, music, some kind of sports, parties for the committees that we have. And the last floor here, we have uh, the restaurant. Everything we do, it. we try to connect it in a way or another with right of return. For example, if you come to this building, wherever you look, you'll have names for the Palestinian villages that we come from. Uh, you will have some pictures for the Palestinian villages that we come from. So, you know, we try to connect it in a way or another to right of return. And the word itself in Arabic, uh, it's meant to create something out of nothing. And this is exactly what we did here inside this refugee camp. And this is exactly what we are doing here in this cultural center.
farm. But people, they start to even to use anything to farm. You can see a lot of trees here inside the refugee camp. Also, a lot of people, when we say 11,000 people, only human beings. But if you go to the reality and you, you see here, there is a lot of animals even live with us inside the refugee camp. And I think even the animals here inside the refugee camp, they don't want to live in this kind of condition. <laughs> <laughs> we can say it's a kind of alternative work here inside the refugee camp. Like, as I say, people they used to be workers inside Israel, and now they start to find an alternative work to work. So through the goats here, they can make cheese, milk, everything. Sally, I didn't introduce her. <laughs> Sally, her father, he was inside the Israeli jails for six years. And he died. You know, in the last year he spent inside the Israeli jail. He get cancer and he died inside the Israeli jails. Maybe you saw her. She was pointing there. There is a bridge uh, there. It's called Amjad Faraj Bridge. They call it this, uh, this name because of her father. She says, like this is my father's bridge, I told her, yeah. <laughs> you can see the satellites, that's me. Most of the people can say we know about everything in this world. We try to educate ourselves about all the conflicts in this world, but I think no one knows about us as Palestinian refugees. From the street to this side, this the Haisha, there, there is a blue tank, it's the end of the camp. At the same time, you can see all the settlements which it is around. Also, there is a special road only for Israelis, Palestinians, they are not allowed to use it. Like, if you look there, you can see a part of the wall. Also, one of the settlements, it's called Gilo Settlement. Here, we have the mountains there, and the mountains, like three uh, military camps for the Israeli army. This side, there is a special road, it's called 60 Road. It's only for... I, I can't address this. She told me you will dress. Fifteen years, they, maybe the Jewish doing like uh, Der Yassin, Qarya, village in, uh, near Jerusalem. The first time I came here, I was really surprised. No what they are protecting themselves from. I actually, if you are afraid, you will protect yourself. If you are not afraid, you don't need that. And if you are guilty, you feel all the people are watching you. This is what they were feeling. Don't understand how they deal with us. But this is what they learned, how to hate us. How to break out the hatred. Like for me, I would protect myself in such a thing from a monster or an alien such as Hollywood movies <laughs> but not from people <laughs> no if I go to Israel I wouldn't feel they would kill me soldiers yeah maybe but I know that the Israelis are human beings the same like me have the same blood and have similar ideas in the beginning we are human beings. This is what, what's more important for me. They're just looking for life. But I've been grown with the same hatred that being grow they've been grown on. But it's just you, yourself, if you can make the revolution on what you've been grown on and make peace. The money that they spend to make war is so much 
you need like 10% of that to make peace. We are just normal, we are human beings. That's what they can't understand. Or that was their government. Do not them want to understand. They want them all the way controlled by the government, controlled by fear from us. From the entire world actually. <laughs> It's not only from us, because making Israel the state of Jews makes them feel that they are hated from all over the countries. But actually, we learn how to hate Jews from the Europeans. It's not something we created. Jews lived here for long times, and we used to have friends even after the occupation. Like, my father used to have a friend called Eddie. And we used to hook up together. We used to go to the Dead Sea together. But after the intifada, he was after the first intifada. Jerusalem. The first time I came here, I was really surprised by what they are protecting themselves from. I actually, if you are afraid, you will protect yourself. If you are not afraid, you don't need that. And if you are guilty, you'll feel all the people are watching you. This is what they were feeling. Don't understand how they deal with us. But this is what they learned, how to hate us. How to bring out hatred. Like for me, I would protect myself in such a thing from a monster or an alien. Such as Hollywood movies. <laughs> but not from people. If I go to Israel, I wouldn't feel they will kill me. Soldiers, yeah, maybe, but I know that the Israelis are human beings. The same like me, have the same blood and have similar ideas. In the beginning, we are human beings. This is what what's more important for me. They're just looking for life, but... I uh, being grown with the same hatred that being grown they being grown on, but it's just you yourself if you can make the revolution on what you've been grown on and make peace. The money that they spend to make wool is so much. You need like ten percent of that to make peace. We are just normal, we are human beings. That's what they can't understand. Or that was their government. Do not them want to understand. They want them all the way controlled by the government, controlled by fear from us. From the entire world, actually. It's not only from us, because making Israel the state of Jews makes them feel that they are hated from all over the countries but actually we learn how to hate Jews from the Europeans it's not something we created Jews lived here for long times and we used to have friends even after the occupation like my father used to have a friend called Eddie and we used to hook up together we used to go to the Dead Sea together but after the intifada he was after the first intifada actually who was prevented from coming coming here because uh, they are Palestinians, they hate you. And they are created to hate you. Now, even if the peace process took over and we had our country, we can't survive with the settlements because it's in the middle of the West Bank, but it's considered as Israeli. It's controlled by Israelis. It's, it's protected by Israelis. And we can't read them. The settlements are taking the lands of Bethlehem, but it's considered Israeli. I can't get in. It's, uh, it will be considered in the future as apart from Israel. So I can't pass by, by, by the settlements as any other Palestinian who's living in the West Bank or in Gaza. So it's in general like places as in my idea, it's hot places you can't preach, or uh, places just in memory.
Here you can see the real streets. It's, not, it's less than two meters. At the same time, you don't have the refugee camps. We don't have names for the streets. Israelis, they used to name their, uh, the streets by their own. For example, if you look here, you can see some Hebrew handwriting from the first intifada. It was written by the Israelis. It says the Fork Street. Uh, like, they do this just to, to know where they are or to communicate together. At the same time, if you look here, this is the only free space inside the refugee camp where our kids used to play. Like, if you come after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll find a lot of kids playing here because we don't have space. So the only sp space inside the refugee camp is this one. If you look even to the houses here inside the refugee camp, you can see people they build in the top of the houses because we don't have enough space inside the refugee camp. Like, uh, you know, in the Arab community in general, you can find the father and the mother, they live in the middle. Where the, when their sons, they get married, they used to live around them. Uh, here in the Haisha, we don't have the system. The only way to build it is in the top of the houses. One day, I think we will reach the sky. Like, we can find the father and the mother, they live in the first house. Their sons, when they get married, they used to build in the top and they live in the top. <coughs> and also, houses here, it's very close to each other. That's mean. We don't have a privacy even inside the refugee camp. It's also one of the problems that we have here. Uh, sometimes if you had a fight inside the house with your wife, you know, all the neighborhood will know about it. Now we are going to one of the oldest areas inside the refugee camp where we can see the original rooms, the original buildings inside the refugee camp. Also, we'll see one of the bathrooms that people they used to use. Because of her father, she says, like, this is my father's bridge. I told her, yeah. <laughs> you can see the satellites. That's me. Most of the people can say we know about everything in this world. We try to educate ourselves about all the conflicts in this world, but I think no one knows about us as Palestinian refugees. From the street to this side, this is the Haisha, there, there is a blue tank, it's the end of the camp. At the same time, you can see all the settlements which it is around. Also, there is a special road only for Israelis, Palestinians, they, uh, they are not allowed to use it. Like, if you look there, you can see a part of the wall. Also, one of the settlements, it's called Gilo Settlement. Here, we have the mountains there, and the, uh, the mountains, like three uh, military camps for the Israeli army. This side, there is a special road, it's called 60 Road. It's only for Israelis, Palestinians, they are not allowed to use it. This side here we have uh, another settlement, it's called the Frata, the Frata settlement. Here military camps in all these mountains. This side here we have another settlement, it's called the Kua settlement. From this side, Har Huma, that's mean, we are already have a wall, wall of settlements before the real wall. For me, I like the wall. Because in, uh, in general, since we born inside this refugee camp, we used to live near a fence, but no one know about it. Now, no one can ignore the wall anymore. It's a wall, it's in front of you, you can't ignore it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. And at the same time, you can't ignore us as, as Palestinians. You can't say that we are a terrorist anymore, because, I mean, the wall itself, I don't like it, at the same time I like it because of this issue, which it is, it's the reality. You can't ignore it, and that's it. Uh, land 
and uh, my mother, she had three boys before me in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, boys. Uh, and after uh, they left the, the village, they came to uh, village named Su'ir, near uh, Hebron. And after they left and come to Dhesha camp. When they come, uh, my uh, mother was pregnant. And after, uh, after six months, uh, they have tent in Dhesha camp from UN, Anrua. They give him tent. And uh, I born there in the middle of the camp, in the tent. In 51, yes. And uh, after uh, they have, uh, in summer, they are quiet and they stay in the tent. After, the, after summer, uh, autumn and uh, winter. In winter, the tent damaged. They took us to Bijala. Bejala near us here, city, and uh, we lived in uh, old building with my parents. I uh, six, about six months I was, and they left the camp because raining too much and they can't stay in the tent. Uh, we stayed till uh, spring, and again they come to uh, to Dhesha camp uh, and they again uh, build the tent. And uh, we stay uh, about three or uh, five, five years when they start to build the Anrua for us. My mother, she uh, was bring the water from uh, Burak, about two kilo, three kilo to, uh, to do for us, to clean for us. And it is uh, uh, far, the water was very far. She put on the her head the tank and she come about three times. She go three kilo and come to bring water for us. And uh, the U uh, UN give uh, something for UN for uh, refugee. They give uh, rice, oil, uh, uh, flour. But it is not enough. But what they give, they eat because no money, no job, they start uh, in the tent. Had possibility to improve or to be planted or doing any kind of improvement with the land because of the military base. Uh, most of the lands around were nearly confiscated because of this space. And that land there, there was also a tower there towards the, this road. Uh, like this space used to extend till that area. Uh, it's not only where we are walking. Like the base here is just the place where they can, the uh, where the soldiers used to have some sleep or some rest from watching us. Uh, this base is uh, to protect four settlers, and then they got that road. So that tower, that uh, military tower, is doing the, sa the same job that this base, all of this base, was trying to do, which is protecting that road that leads between the settlements. Actually, the wall here passes just down of this hill, just down of here. You can see it from here, but it passes from down of this hill. This is, a this is considered by Oslo as Area C where Palestinians can't have, like, Area C is so confusing, like, uh, you are under control, but anything you want to build, anything you want to make, you have to ask for uh, an Israeli permission for that, so, like, it's easy to get the Palestinian permission, but it's impossible to get the Israeli permission. And actually, they keep these areas empty because, like, they're trying to keep this area, these areas empty. 
because especially in Beit Sahur, like from Bethlehem, especially in Beit Sahur and like the east part and some of the west part, they don't build a wall, they built a fence, a kind of electrical fence. Uh, now they surrounded Beth, uh, Beit Sahur with an electrical fence, so in the future if they want to have uh, more lands or confiscate more lands, it's easy to move a fence better than moving a wall. Uh, so in the future we do, I don't know if in 10 years period I can be standing here again or not or I'm allowed to be here or not Less than two meters. At the same time, you don't have the refugee camps. We don't have names for the streets. Israelis they used to name their uh, the streets by their own. For example, if you look here, you can see some Hebrew handwriting from the first Intifada. It was written by the Israelis. It says the Fork Street. Uh, like they do this just to to know where they are or to communicate together. At the same time, if you look here, this is the only free space inside the refugee camp where our kids used to play. Like if you come after 3 o'clock and afternoon, you'll find a lot of kids playing here because we don't have space. So the only sp space inside the refugee camp is this one. If you look even to the houses here inside the refugee camp, you can see people they build in the top of the houses because we don't have enough space inside the refugee camp. Like. Uh, you know, in the Arab community in general, you can find the father and the mother, they live in the middle. Where the, when their sons, they get married, they used to live around them. Uh, here in the Haisha, we don't have the system. The only way to build it is in the top of the house is one day, I think, we will reach the sky. Like, we can find the father and the mother, they live in the first house. Their sons, when they get married, they used to build in the top and they live in the top. <coughs> and also, houses here, it's very close to each other. That's mean. We don't have a privacy even inside the refugee camp. It's also one of the problems that we have here. Uh, sometimes if you had a fight inside the house with your wife, you know, all the neighborhood will know about it. Now we are going to one of the oldest areas inside the refugee camp where we can see the original rooms, the original buildings inside the refugee camp. Also, we'll see one of the bathrooms that people they used to use. In this place here, we have six rooms here. We have six rooms for six families. They used to live in this place. Like, you can see the original rooms that we have inside the refugee camp. These rooms, uh, as I mentioned before, these rooms used to be the only thing for the families in that time. And, uh, like we will, the average for the families, as I say, it used to be between six to ten, and you can imagine how the people they used to live in the, this kind of rooms, like even with their stuff. Like, um, and we are not talking only about human beings who live in here. Only their sheets, all their stuff used to be in this kind of rooms. And here you can see also one of the public bathrooms that the people they used to use. Like, used to be like the letter, but by by the time it's destroyed, uh, one hundred. 25 they used to use this bathroom